This is a preview of the latest episode of Gators Breakdown. Link to the full episode is in the description. That's the wide receiver position, and there are plenty, plenty of options right here for the Gators to get some pretty good players uh, when you look at the wide receiver position. And starting at the top, Jeremiah Smith, the five-star from Opelika, second overall player in the class, the number one wide receiver in the class, committed to Ohio State back on December 14th. Uh, 24-7 sports and, and what they have to say, Andrew Ivins, you know, really concentrated right there in South Florida area. So he's got some good write-ups here uh, for these receivers. But, you know, says one of the most talented wide receiver prospects to come out of South Florida in the modern recruiting era. Uh, that says <laughs> that says a lot from all the wide receivers that we've seen go to Ohio State and all the wide receivers we've seen go to Alabama uh, recently. Jeremiah Smith is getting this label of one of the best out there. Uh, as I said, you know, it, it stings a bit that he's already committed to Ohio State, but, you know, maybe may, maybe there's a door open right here uh, to pull in one Jeremiah Smith. Um, this is, goes on to say the type of wide out that can beat a defense over the top one play, then box defenders out in the corner of the end zone the next, has a knack for making high-level grabs, look extremely routine, like plucking the ball out of the air with one hand in traffic. Uh, he was Max Preps Jr. All-American. Helped Chaminade, Madonna Prep, capture a Florida um, uh, state title, finished the season ranked number 10 in the Max Preps top 25. Will, in 13 games, he caught 58 passes for 1,073 yards and 20 touchdowns. Uh, of course, Gators still in heavy contact like they should be uh, with one of the best players in the country right here in the state. Trying to get him to visit in March as long as his track schedule doesn't get in the way. Uh, he is in contact with DJ Lagway. Uh, says he definitely wants to take an official, official to Florida. Uh, but, you know, this one is probably going to be, given the pedigree of Ohio State uh, recently and those, are, and, and those receivers, definitely going to be a tough pull to pull him away from Ohio State. But, I mean, come on. just, just, just Let's just do it. And, uh, you know, it's um, don't go sit at Ohio State. No, probably, Smith, I wouldn't project. I mean, look. Ohio State has recruited really well, and he could probably walk in at, at Florida and be a day one starter if he lives up to this type of potential. Uh, so, you know, can a school say, hey, don't go sit behind the rest of those Ohio State receivers that have been going there the last few years. Come somewhere else, come somewhere like Florida, uh, where you can get a better chance uh, of playing time and come in with a high-profile quarterback like DJ Lagway. Uh, next up, JoJo Trader, Hollywood, Florida, five-star, 12th overall, uh, they got him as an athlete, but he will be uh, a receiver here at the next level. Um, they go on to say 6'1", 170. Uh, big play waiting to happen, they say, on 24-7. One of the best we've seen in recent years at tracking the football, making acrobatic grabs as he'll lay out to move the chains or levitate over defenders for six points. Not the biggest of skill players, but has started to add some mass in the upper half. Tends to play much bigger than the numbers suggest. Tempo-based route runner that likes to mix gears and shakes defenders. Out on the perimeter in 13 games, he caught 47 passes for 473 yards, seven touchdowns uh, while working at wide receiver. Uh, and then third on the list right here, Draylon Miller from the state of Texas, uh, four-star, um, 67th ranked. He's a ninth-ranked receiver in the country um, from Silsby, Texas, 6'2", 198, caught 59 passes for 1,400 yards, 21 touchdowns last season. I was supposed to come for a visit in January but couldn't make it, but looking to come uh, in, in March uh, for a visit with Lagway. Um, so interesting there. I, I don't know how high up on the board Miller is, uh, but you know, being from the state of Texas, I believe there's a, a relationship with Lagway. We'll see how far that one goes. Uh, James Randall uh, right here from Homestead, four-star, 110th overall, the 18th ranked wide receiver, six foot, 175, 24 7 sports. Uh, gives this analysis a well rounded wide receiver that's not going to blow anyone away with his build, but always seems to be making big plays. Naturally skilled route runner that does a nice job of mixing speeds, exploding in and out of breaks, tracks back to the football better than most at his age, uh, which is, in, you know, uh, and it gets aggressive at the catch point, encouraging for someone that's on the slender side. Surprisingly large catch radius. Uh, does his best to make his quarterback look good. Caught 60 passes, 1,015 yards, 12 touchdowns for Daytona Beach Mainland, and now will play his senior season at Homestead. Uh, last right here on the list, if you're looking on YouTube, is Chance Robinson from Fort Lauderdale, four-star, 113th overall, the 20th-ranked wide receiver. 
24-7 Sports says a game changer on Friday night has waited his turn at one of South Florida's top powerhouses. Looks much bigger than a six-foot, one-and-a-half, 190-pound listing as he sticked throughout the torso, but not necessarily in a bad way. Caught just two passes as a sophomore before bursting onto the scene last year as a junior, totaling 540 receiving yards, 13 touchdowns on 29 catches. Scored every 2.2 receptions. He wins at the line of scrimmage with a fine-tuned release as he quick stabs and jabs with his feet to keep defensive backs guessing, can work various numbers of the route tree, uh, but seems to be at his best when he's just trying to get vertical on the outside. So there's a top five there targets uh, we're looking at, Will, uh, mostly in the state of Florida, loaded, and by no surprise, really, loaded in the South Florida area. Yeah, I mean, look, I think Miami's usually pretty loaded when it comes to wide receivers and speed. No secret down there. I mean, Smith obviously is the key. He'd be the highest rated wide receiver that Florida's ever signed. I, th- I don't think I think Harvin was like seventh overall um, in terms of like overall ratings and things like that. Yeah. He's probably right in line with that. But I mean, you think about the last five star that Florida signed at wide receiver. Who was it? Andre DeBose? Is that the last guy? I mean, oh. I, you know, the the top guys that Florida's had, they had they they had Bubba Caldwell, they had Chad Jackson, they had Percy Harvin, and then and I think it's Debose, and that's sort of it when you think about the five star guys who come in. Smith immediately fits in that ilk in terms of guys. I mean, you know, like Chad Jackson and <laughs> Bubba Caldwell, and then Percy mm-hmm. Harvin obviously turned out. Debose had some exciting plays, but wasn't necessarily everything we thought he would be. But that's that's who you're talking about when you're talking about Jeremiah Smith and JoJo Trader. And um, that's an awesome name, man. I would I would really <laughs> enjoy JoJo Trader being somebody that we get to talk about for three years um, here at Florida. I think one of the things you really got to take into consideration is where Florida's roster is at the wide receiver position. It's going to be really thin after next year. You figure Ricky Pearsall's probably gone. Then you got uh, Frazier's, Henderson, Chiakau Bowman, and Weston in that junior category. You got Marcus Burke and Caleb Douglas as sophomores or redshirt sophomores. And then you got Gene Wilson and Mizell from this last class. I mean, look, if if Pearsall leaves, if Henderson, st- if Henderson ends up leaving and, you know, somebody from Frazier's, Bowman, and Weston don't step up, like you're you're basically looking at these guys are going to come in and get playing time right away. And not yeah, the, class, the class that just came in for sure. And then – yeah, these guys, they could sell these guys for sure. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I, I think we always got confused when when Dan Mullen would like bring in a whole new four wide receivers, you know, yeah. and, one, and one of the guys not on the field would be Kyle Pitts there in 2020. But in some ways, getting those guys the experience and having everybody get get playing time was an important part of what what he was doing. And, and you know, we got to see guys like like Trent Whittemore and, and things like that make some plays in big games right against LSU and, and and some other games as well. So, look, I think Smith, Trader, Miller especially, but Randall and Robinson as well will have opportunities to come in and contribute right away. There's not a big difference. Like there's not somebody that I look at in this list that you've got there. Who's like, hey, like, like, so if you look at the class for for 2023, Gene is clearly the burner. Wilson is the slot, and then Mizell is another guy who you'd probably have out on the outside. Who's more, who's the most complete of the three wide receiver recruits coming in. But it was interesting to me that they've got a guy in Eugene Wilson who I sit there and go, yeah, that's a guy you put in the slot and have him run plays sort of like Kadarius Tony ran the other day for Kansas City against yeah. uh, against Philadelphia. There's nobody really that meets that role i mean i think smith at six foot three is a guy you plan on putting on the outside getting the ball out to him on a bubble screen and say go um but again if you get smith and then if you combine that <laughs> with with Jarrett gibson all of a sudden now you got two guys who could take it to the house on a little ball out there and and guys like uh guys like guys like graham mertz are going to look a lot better if they're surrounded by these guys so um yes yeah, so I, I think it's been a really long time since Florida's had a five-star recruit. It's been a really long time since Florida's had a wide receiver up in the rating, up in the rating stratosphere of Jeremiah Smith. Obviously, though, it's a battle with Ohio State and it's a battle with Miami, right? All of these like Homestead, Fort Lauderdale, Opelika, and Hollywood are all down there in John Ruiz tra- territory. And so yeah. you know, and you the, know Alabama's not going away. Georgia's not going away for these type of guys. But Al- even with the Ohio State's recent success, you know, that's been uh, an area too where these guys go to Alabama. Absolutely. But that, that's all part of it, right? I mean, part yes. of build part of building your program is you got to win these battles. And yep. if all you if all you do is settle for the guys in the in the 200 range, continuous 
obviously, while Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, and Miami come in and, and grab all the five stars. Well, you know, you're going to struggle when you play those teams. So Napier, you know, look, the lagway and the and the Graham commit are huge to start with. But a guy like Smith or a guy like Gibson adding, and if you can add both to this class, you're sitting there in a top three class almost immediately with those guys being added. Want more Gators Breakdown? Join Gators Breakdown Plus. Starting at $3 a month, get access to unique episodes, plus a blog, chat room, giveaways, shout outs, and more. Gators Breakdown Plus is furthering the interaction with fans and listeners like you. Head to gatorsbreakdown.supportingcast.fm to join Gators Breakdown Plus today.